Let's take a look at the examples from the back of the worksheet. And the first step that you want to take in this process is to first see if you can substitute. If we can, that's what we want to do. Because if you get a yes, you're very happy, and you get a number out. And then you say, OK, I'm done. I got my limit, and, and it's a number. So when you take a look at down here, the examples to try yourself, you can substitute a 2 in, because you get 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 2 is 8. So let's write that down. 2 squared minus 4 times 2 is 4 minus 8, which gives you negative 4. We didn't run into anything undefined, so that's the answer for number 1. But when you take a look up here, and you have limits with infinity in them, if we had an infinity in here, it'd be 2 times infinity minus 1, still infinity, infinity plus 2, still infinity, infinity over infinity. Well, that's undefined. So if you try to substitute and you get a no, then it's going to take a little bit more work on your part. The first thing you try to do is factor and see if you can factor. You can't this one. So then what we have to do is algebra. And we'll walk through it and then go back and write the rest of our steps down for this process. And this is actually the second decision that you have to make. The first one is up here where you're substituting. Sorry, scribbling over everything. <laughs> I'll just circle it again. And so let's go back up to example five. What we want to do is multiply this by 1 over the highest powered variable that you have. And so in this function, that's just x. So in other words, we're dividing every term by x. You still have to write limit as x goes to infinity. Don't lose that. You get 2x over x minus 1 over x in the numerator all over x over x plus 2 over x. When we do that, you can then divide out these x's, and so we get the limit as x goes to infinity of 2. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 2 minus 1 over x, because you can't simplify that piece. In the denominator, these x's divide out to give you 1, so you get 1 plus and you can't simplify the 2 over x. The reason we do this is because we're trying to get terms who have a variable in the denominator so that when we take the limit to infinity, we're going to drive these things to 0 and just get the other terms that have numbers. So when you look at this original one, anything that has a coefficient and has the variable of the highest power, those coefficients end up being in the limit at the end whereas any numbers or powers less than that highest power are going to end up going to zero. So like this. We're going to take infinity and take the limit as it goes to infinity. When you do that, the 2 stays the same. What happens to the 1 over x? Well, the x is getting larger and larger, so it's 1 over a million, 1 over a billion, 1 over a quadrillion, 1 over a quincentennial billion. Just bigger and bigger numbers. And what's happening, a fraction who gets a larger and larger denominator is getting closer and closer to zero. So this guy is going to zero. In the denominator, the one comes along for the ride. And what happens to this term? Well, the x in the denominator, again, as the limit goes to infinity, we're putting larger and larger and larger numbers in there. So two over that larger number that guy is going to zero, and so you get zero. So we end up getting a two. And so, sorry, I got interrupted there for a second. So this limit here is two. So when we do this algebra, and let's go down and finish our instructions that we have here. When we, we do the algebra part that's, that's here, the first thing we had to do was create complex fractions.
and then we simplified. Then we took the limit, and where you write take the limit, you can also say driving fractions with variables in the denominator to zero, and then you get a number. Now what happens if we can factor? Because when you take a look at a problem like, say this guy, number three, <coughs> if you put a one in the denominator, you get one minus one, which is undefined, so you can't substitute. So in our decision tree, we're over here at no, we can't substitute. We want to avoid doing the algebraic way, unless you're asked, you must do it the algebraic way. You want to factor if you can. And when you factor, we typically try to get this, what is ever in the denominator, as a factor in the numerator. So let's go ahead and do that. Limit as x goes to 1, the denominator is x minus 1, and look at the numerator. What do you do to get x squared? x times x. How do you get a 2? Well, to get a 2, it's going to be 1 times 2. Because this sign is negative, it's saying the signs are different, and they're going to add to 1. So we need to have a positive 2 and a negative 1. That then allows us to divide out the negative 1s. So we get the limit as x goes to 1 of just x plus 2. Well, we like that because now we can substitute in the 1 for that x, and we get 1 plus 2, which is 3. Sure, the domain is still going to be constrained because x can't be 1, but as the function goes to 1, these x values, the function value is going to go to 3. So this function has a hole in it, much like the examples on the other side. So let's go ahead and finish our tree here. After you factor, you're going to simplify. And then substitute and you get a number, and then you're done. And so when you take a look at these at the, at the bottom, sorry, <laughs> the loud noise, for numbers 1 and 2, you can substitute for 3 all the way up through 7, up through 6, you're going to need to factor, and then 7 to... 9, you're graphing, you were asked to do that by graphing, and then 10, all the way through to the end, you can use the algebra skills that you had. So this, <laughs> this process here, which is this example that you're going to follow right here. So that's it. Hope this helps. I will see you soon. Hope you're having an awesome day.